Hey folks, how you doing? Hopefully we're all having a great day today. This is part two of a three-part series on building a contractor rolling toolbox, a, a big contractor trailer uh, to take to different job sites. This isn't for me, this is for a friend of mine, a local friend of mine who is an on-site contractor. So part one of this series covered the SketchUp design or how we came to this particular design. Part two, which is this video right here, will cover the entire assembly and cutting an assembly. And then part three will be a walkthrough of the 100% completed ready for the maiden voyage trailer. So without further ado, let's rewind about a month and we'll get started with cutting and assembly. This project calls for 25 sheets of plywood. The majority of those are one half of an inch thick, a few at three quarters of an inch thick, and a few at one quarter of an inch thick. 23 of the 25 sheets are cut on the CNC machine with the rest being basic table saw cuts. Cutting and assembly day started at 8.30 a.m. and we wasted no time getting the CNC running. Our number one priority for the entire day was to keep the machine running. We can always find something to do while the machine runs, so no matter what, when the machine stopped, we needed to unload, load, and start it up again quickly. Ben and Misty aren't familiar with the nuances of CNC design or CNC cutting, so during the first sheet, I made sure to let them know how the tabs work. Small tabs are added to the toolpaths to prevent the pieces from shifting after the piece is cut. This is necessary when you don't have a vacuum table on the machine to hold the material to the table. As you will see later, instead of removing the parts piece by piece on the machine, the entire sheet is moved to the assembly table where the pieces can be removed from the waist. For all 23 sheets, I ran the same one quarter of an inch diameter two flute spiral down cut bit from bitsandbits.com. It's an astro-coated bit which reduces friction and heat buildup, which therefore prolongs the life of the bit. All of the tool paths were set at a quarter inch depth of cut and 300 inches per minute travel. While cutting the first sheet, I increased the travel in Mach 4 to 150%, which put it at about 450 inches per minute of travel, but I did forget to adjust the spindle RPM. Luckily, we didn't see any decrease in cut quality with the increased chip load. When laying out the pieces to be cut, the quickest thing to do is just let the software nest the parts. However, I did not want pieces of each cabinet and each drawer to be spread among many sheets, so I nested them manually. Having full control over the nesting process, it slows things down a little bit on the front end, but in doing so, I was able to get Ben and Misty assembling by the end of sheet number two. The assembly process is crazy simple. This style of construction uses box joints for everything on edge and mortise and tenon for everything in the middle. It's like putting together a set of big kid Legos. We started with the right wall, which is the drawer wall, and there are four drawer cabinets on this side with a divider system above. Each one of the cabinets gets two horizontal braces on top, two on back, and two on bottom. After a few sheets, we all settled into a groove and, and stayed busy. Misty was always assembling, Ben was helping assemble and then also removing tabs when the new sheet came off the machine, and I was helping Ben with the tabs when I wasn't getting the machine going. All three of us were moving and we rarely stopped. We were like in a well-oiled machine and it felt really, really good to be leading so much productivity. It finally dawned on me that a flush trim bit and the trim router wasn't the most efficient tool for the tabs due to the high number of pieces for this particular job. A much better process would be to take the part to the tool rather than the tool to the part. So I set up the router table with a flush trim bit instead. Once the router table was set up, Ben and I established a little bit of a workflow where I would break down the pieces free from the waist and stack them for trimming at the router table. This sped things up quite a bit. After all four cabinets were assembled, the drawer marathon could begin, and that's exactly what it was. It was a drawer marathon. This design calls for 26 drawers of four different sizes. One of the best takeaways from this build was the use of numbered drawers. Each drawer front got a number cut into it, and this is, it's incredibly convenient for the crew working on site. After getting accustomed to the drawer layout, someone can ask for a runner to go get whatever item out of whatever numbered drawer and immediately know where it is. So since implementing this system for Ben and his trailer, I wanna do this to all of the drawers in my shop, everything that I make going forward. Here you can get a better idea of the construction method. As I said, box joints for every joint on the edges and mortise and tenon joints for all of the interior connections. 
The drawer assembly marathon continued for the rest of day one, which only lasted five and a half hours due to some scheduling issues. And in those five and a half hours, we got all of the full sheet CNC work done. We assembled all four of the right side cabinets. We assembled all 26 drawers and got started on the divider system. We were knocking out some serious work and it felt great. Day two in the shop started out with the divider system that's gonna go on top of the drawer cabinets on the right wall. This is a 90 inch long cabinet with one quarter of an inch wide dados spaced about one and a half inches apart. The dados are for quarter inch plywood panels to divide the space as needed. From here on out, there is no CNC box joints or mortise and tenon joints. It's all pocket holes, it's all brad nails, and a lot of glue. The back panel stiffens the assembly and is held in place with glue and brad nails. At this point, the CNC work, it's done. The rest of the cutting can be done with the table saw and miter saw. So I was ripping strips of one quarter of an inch plywood at the table saw, while Ben and Misty were sizing them to fit in the box at the miter saw. Finally, the left side can begin, and this side is a much more simple design. It's a larger assembly, but it's a more simple design that has larger item and scrap wood storage. A big priority for Ben was to have an organized system to store scrap wood and scrap plywood. Making this large of a project also made me realize a few things about my shop layout and workflow. First, returning to a four foot by eight foot assembly table was a great move, especially for plywood based projects. Second, I realized that I have a lot of medium sized walkways that result in less open floor space for large assemblies. As much open space as I have here in the shop, we had to slide the assembly table around a few times to get the left side assembly built. The last piece of the puzzle was to add the floor piece to the left side assembly, then we could orient it for loading into the trailer. We ended up making some very specific brackets to use existing bolt holes in the left wall for securing the left side assembly, and the entire right side, it was just kind of set in place and temporarily strapped to the wall for the ride home. This concludes the work in my shop. In total, we had 10 shop hours of work spread over two days. The first five and a half hours of day one, that was with me, Ben, and Misty. And then day two, four and a half hours, was me, Ben, Misty, and one of their employees, uh, Chris, if I'm not mistaken. We worked great as a team and we were very, very productive. Part one of this build covers the SketchUp design. The cutting and assembly covered here is part two and part three will cover the completed and loaded trailer right before its maiden voyage. So that's it for this video. Be sure to go to jayscustomcreations.com slash newsletter to sign up for my email newsletter so you don't miss anything that I publish. Subscribe here if you want to see more videos like this. Take care, and I'll talk to you in the next video.